in the previous video we had talked about um what uh, testing is why do we actually need to write tests for our software um we talked about the theoretical uh, bits where we talked about the, th the terminology we talked about what is unit testing what is performance testing what is integration testing we also talked about why we need uh, to write tests inside our applications and we also had a uh, developed our simple rest api runner where we had uh, had had our dependencies uh, installed and also had some simple rest api up and running in this video we are going to jump inside junit and see how junit works so junit is a popular unit testing framework in the java ecosystem and we will be using junit 5 and let's see how all of this you know works so first Uh, as i said uh, we need to have some conventions so uh, we need to understand some conventions when we are writing tests uh, we need to write our tests inside the test folder inside java and here you need to have a java class uh, which will basically uh, have a name now when you are writing a test class uh, the class uh, name must end with test so that we know that is a test class so here let's just say a uh, j unit example test and now we have a class ready to be tested now uh, let's basically first see how you know everything works here so all we have to do is do as a rate test and uh, let's just say void demo test method and here what we can do is assert true and just do true and let's import assert true now so more actions import static method from j unit okay so now we have a simple test which basically is you know which passes no matter what happens now let us run this test and see you know how it looks like So when you run this class, we want to see what happens, right? We want to see what are we actually doing behind the scenes, or what is happening, uh, and how do we actually check whether the test pass or the test failed. So this one has to pass by default because you know we are asserting true and it is true. Hmm. So our test failed, and uh, now we need to see why it failed. So it should be public. So we'll do a public. void test method and let's run it again so uh, now when you slowly see you'll uh, slowly understand how it is working you know so we wrote a test uh, the test failed and we exactly knew what was wrong with the test you know there was no public and the uh, test has to be public no that way we can you know use our test to understand what is wrong with our code so now as you can see uh, we have a part uh, you know we pass a test and when we pass a test we get nothing uh, in the console uh, that tells us that you know everything was running smoothly and you know we don't have to worry about anything that is happening okay great now let's actually write some good tests you know not something like this uh, let's go inside our application create a new class uh, let's say calculator simple simple examples uh, because we are just learning how unit testing works so a very simple example a calculator uh, this will have a method so public int um multiply and uh, we are multiplying two numbers and now we just return a b now we uh, this is a very simple example and you might think you know that this is not uh, worthy enough for a test because you no know, what are we doing we just multiplying two numbers but uh, let's just start with simple examples to so understand how the framework uh, is and you know what the framework does and then we will add some real life examples with the rest api application so bear with me uh, for these tests uh, they look very simple i understand but we will slowly you know go inside the good ones the good tests okay So when you have a class, you know, uh, we need to write tests for that class. So let's go inside Java and do another one. So we do calculator test, and this class will have all of our uh, tests for the calculator class. Now we need to test the calculator class, so we need that inside our 
so calculator calculator now we need to, we haven't initialized this yet right so we need to initialize this before we you know tell, we go inside our tests right so here as you can see this is a test every our test will be method so before we go inside this method we want our calculator class to be initialized so uh, jlit provides you with annotation called as before each so before each test that we write do this and this is going to be a void a setup method this will just set up our testing environment and all we do is we do calculator equal to new calculator and that's it we have our calculator class initialized for our testing environment now we can start with our tests so first we need to do a simple test right a simple test that uh, we know so let's just write test um, let's import the class from JUnit and this will be void test multiply a simple test nothing complicated here or pretty straightforward and all we do is assert equals and uh, our output will be 20 and when we do a calculator dot multiply uh, when you multiply 4 and 5 we get the output as 20 let's again uh, import the static methods okay so as you can see uh, we are doing a calculator multiply from 4 and 5 and we expect 20 to be the answer and we do one equals test here pretty simple straightforward uh, let's make this public um, because we don't want the same errors again so public yep so a pretty simple test uh, let's see uh, what happens here and we'll do a run for our test you can also run an individual test but we'll just run the entire class uh, because why not So the test failed uh, because we got a null pointer exception and now let's see why that is so let's go ahead and see what was wrong again so at line 18 so now calculator was null and we need to see why that was so let's skip this for now and we'll do uh, calculator equal to new calculator here and then we can test it again and the test is passed so before each had some problems there but we can you know worry about that later when we done but we just want to show you how uh, how testing something looks like and here we saw that clearly with our calculator multiply test now let's do this again uh, now we'll do the same thing but we want to test a different number so if we do our test multiply um, different parameters and let's say we want 5 into 5 which is going to be 25 or uh, so yeah let's test this now let's write two tests and see what happens and both the tests pass pretty straightforward nothing uh, nothing magical happening here and what you should no notice here is that uh, every, nothing is changing here only the values are changing right so we don't need a different test scenario or test case for this this can basically be inside the same test uh, so we have an assert equal and we do another assert equal and here we do 5 comma 5 and the expected is going to be 25 great let's run the test again so let's remove breakpoints for now and just run the test. Yeah, now you see what happens. Now that we have done this, let's actually see what happens when we fail a test. So now let's just say we expect this to be 10 because we don't know what 4 into 5 is. And uh, let's say we just put, you know, we just put this by mistake, or you know, uh, some some other developer uh, 
by mistake had changed the value here and uh, he doesn't know anything about it but now if he does that it messes up the test and how does he know that so when the uh, continuous integration deployment pipeline runs our test the build system it will fail this particular test and we will see how that is so this is how it looks like the test failed the expected was 10 and what it found was 20 by the value so it failed and that is how we know that you know our tests are passing or they are failing now all we have to do here is change it to 20 and we will be back with our tests And yeah, we are back to it. Now, we haven't tested our code out properly, right? Uh, we have done an A into B, but uh, what if you do an A divided by B? So if we call, we have another uh, method here. So let's just say um, wide and we do A by B. Now, how does that work? You know, how does that happen and let's see how this works as well so now let's write another test so we can call this test divide spell it correctly um, does the same thing and all we do is divide and let's say divide 4 by 2 and the expected is, is 2 let's run the test now and the test passed. Now this would uh, make you seem that our calculator is pretty well functioning and it's doing what it has to do, it's dividing and multiplying. But what happens when you divide by zero? Because that is a, a, an edge case that we need to understand and we need to you know handle. So let us see what happens here. So if somebody in application is using a calculator and it divides by zero, uh, we need to tell him something. We need to give him you know uh, something. So here we say, uh, test failed and authorized one divided by zero. Now we can write test cases where we handle this, but we will look into that in the upcoming videos with the rest applications. So uh, this is uh, this video was basically an introduction of how the JUnit framework is and some big examples where we understand how JUnit works. And in the from the next video, we are going to start building our REST API application and then you know start writing unit tests for it. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.